Configuring Microsoft Diagnostic and Recovery Toolset Using Locksmith. I'm James Conrad. Recently, I was at a small office where they had a domain controller at, that had all the user accounts, and it might have looked something like what you see here in the background, and all the users depended on this domain controller to log them on every day, and it also had some group policies and other things that are important for domain controllers. Well, they were trying to do some troubleshooting on this domain controller, and one of the administrators typed msconfig from a command prompt, which brings up the system configuration tool, and they needed to go to safe mode. So they chose this, and then they clicked OK. And then what would happen here is the system would reboot, and it would go into safe mode. Problem was, they realized as soon as they got to safe mode, they did not have the local administrator's password. Either somebody had forgotten it, or a different administrator who was no longer there had originally set that local password. Because when you boot into safe mode in a domain controller, you don't have access to your Active Directory account, and it's a seldom used local administrator account that you must have the password for. This created a problem because by going to safe mode using msconfig, it got into a loop where every time they try to restart the computer, no matter what they did, it would still go back to that safe mode, and the domain controller was unavailable to the users for a time. And that's where something such as the diagnostics and recovery tool set can really come in handy. So what could they do in that situation? Well, this is where they got a tool set that's available to volume license customers, and in this case, it's the Microsoft Desktop Optimization Pack for Software Assurance, and it's the 2011 R2 version. And what they did was they went down here to the Diagnostic and Recovery Tool Setter. Actually, I did this for them because they weren't aware of this tool. And what this allows us to do is to install this on the computer. Now, you can do this on any com Windows computer, uh, Windows 7, Windows Server 2008, whatever. I actually did it on a different machine than the one they were having trouble with because, obviously, that one kept booting into safe mode. Then we would just choose to install Dart 7.0. I just used the 64-bit version. There's also an older version down here. And this is fairly simple. You just kind of next, next, finish your way through it. And you can kind of see in the background there, there's, there's a lot of other tools that we could take advantage of. And maybe we'll cover those in a future micro nugget. But for the time being, we could just say, you know, whether or not you want to use updates or anything like that, I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. And I'll just kind of click next, next, finish and make a typical installation here and then let it complete. And then I'll show you the end result of this. Once that's installed, you'll then see that you have on the Start menu the Microsoft Dart 7 item, and we're going to choose Dart Recovery Image. I've already go ahead, gone ahead and launched that, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what to do here. Here, you'll just go ahead and identify the Windows 7 or Windows Server 2008 source files. I've got a DVD installed there, so I'm going to go ahead and browse down to where that location is. This is the Windows Server 2008 source files. However, you can also use Windows 7. Either one of those operating system DVD source files will boot for the other operating system, because remember, the code base is the same for both of these. So we're just going to kind of click Next, Next, Finish through this. And then here you can see it's giving us an option to choose whichever tools we want to use. They're all included by default, but you could remove certain ones if you wanted to. For example, if I were concerned that this DVD might get put into the wrong hands, this could be a serious security issue if someone without authorization were using the locksmith tool, because they could access systems that they're not supposed to access, because that allows them to change passwords of the administrator account or any other account. Uh, I can also choose to allow remote connections if I want to. I'm not going to do that for the time being, but you can specify a, a specific port number that the connection uh, can be made on if you want. I'm not going to use debugging tools. That's for a little bit more of a deep analysis of the crash ana analyzer. So we'll skip that one for the time being. And I can choose to use the latest definitions, which means it'll check for the latest ones out there on the internet, which is very useful for this system sweeper definition download. This is going to be a way of checking for any malware that's on the computer. Maybe that's why it won't boot, or maybe why that's, that's why it's having other problems. And you can do this as well with the DVD that we'll create. The next thing it does is it offers to provide driver files for you. It could be that as you're trying to repair this system that Windows doesn't have the driver files for a particular piece of hardware that you need to work with. And so you can add that. That might be useful for something like a RAID array or something like that. Uh, and then it can put any additional files necessary on there as well. We're just going to go ahead and create the ISO file. And as we go ahead and do that, I've already, I've already got one, but I'm just going to go ahead and overwrite uh, the one that I already had. And then we'll go ahead and see that at the end, it'll give you opportunity to burn that to a DVD. 
Now the next thing we can see going on here is that I am booting from that DVD. So I just go, uh, pressed escape to access my boot properties and I'm going to choose to boot from the CD-ROM, or actually it's a DVD that we had created. Uh, here we'll go ahead and load specific Windows files again from the source DVD and then when it's completed with this part you'll see what options we have available. One of the options it'll give you here is if you want to have network connectivity in the background, might be useful if you need to access the internet or to download a specific driver or something like that. And then you can also remap the drive letters to match the ones that were already in the operating system when you, uh, when you do this tool. I'm also going to choose to use the US keyboard input method. And then from this point, we'll see that we'll be able to get the recovery tools specific to the operating system that we're trying to, to fix. So here's Windows Server 2008. I'm going to use recovery tools for that specific item. You can, again, load drivers if you want to. And then this is where it's going to look pretty much the same as if you had booted from the Windows Server 2008 or Windows 7 DVD and chosen to do a repair option. All of these top options are available there. Here we're going to choose the Microsoft Diagnostics and Recovery tool set. Uh, there's a lot of good tools here. I'm kind of tempted to show you about a lot of them, but I'm just going to go here to Locksmith, which is the main point of what we're looking at here. And notice that I can now change the password for any of the local accounts. I've only got the two, but now I can just go ahead and change the password. Has to match, of course. Then I click on Next and Finish, and from this point forward, I'll be able to boot to that particular uh, account, and I know the password because I just set it. Well, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.